So by now, after watching the videos and then reading the book, do you think you'd have enough information to be able to relay to hitters, or maybe if you're a hitter, to actually enhance your skills? I think you'd have the information. As far as putting it all together, that takes a long time. That takes a lot of work. It took me decades to really figure out how to put it all together, and I'm still learning to this day. Um, the one thing that I want to get for the video portion of this chapter is the importance of the the progression when it comes to teaching. I'm not going to get into the progression right now, it's in the book, but what I want you to know, is, especially for coaches and hitters, is as a hitter, there's always something to improve on. So the first thing would always be obviously the mechanics, but after the mechanics, what's there to learn? Most coaches get kind of stagnant with what they teach because they get to a mechanical point to where they don't understand what to teach anymore, and then the, the hitters become bored, they feel like there's nothing else to work on, they feel like there's nothing left to learn. That is completely false. The progression in teaching that I talked about in this chapter should be something to always focus on, especially if you're a coach, to always push the hitter to continue to get better. There is always something to work on. And hitters, if they know that and they know that the coach can continue to push them to, to, to do things that challenge them to make them a better hitter, they're well on their way to becoming the ultimate hitter. Consistency in training is also an important factor in, in developing a quality hitter. Uh, a lot of kids these days don't take the consistency seriously. They end up hitting kind of sporadically and they don't get the maximum results that they want on the field. They have to be able to hit consistently both out of season and in, in season too as well. A lot of times players will get into their season, they'll take time off because they got so many games going on or out of season they're playing a different sport or whatever have you. They just got to make sure that the consistency in hitting has to be done. Big leaguers hit every day almost eight to ten months out of the year and it's something they work on all the time. I'm not expecting you know aspiring young you know little leaguers or high school kids or college kids to hit that much but at the same time it's something that has to be done. Consistency in hitting will definitely make the hitter improve. A hitter's approach to batting practice should be dictated by what their own individual strengths and weaknesses are. A lot of times coaches will get in a team environment and make all hitters do the same thing, hitting the ball oppo or hitting the ball on the ground or what have you. Uh, what we need to do as coaches as, as well as hitters as individuals, we need to understand what our main strengths and weaknesses are and fix those during a batting practice session. A lot of times uh, you'll actually hinder a player's full capabilities by having a team approach. Uh, causing them to hit the ball oppo when they need to work on hitting the ball out in front or vice versa. Another thing too is I think batting practice gets too easy. It gets too um, just kind of going through the motions. We need to challenge hitters a lot more in batting practices, take them to that next level, especially the ones that are pretty good. So let's take our batting practice approach to make it individualized towards each player and let's push them a little bit, get hit, hit, hit them off machines, maybe challenge them with the harder fastballs, maybe work on curveballs or, or whatever. But let's, let's get that approach to batting practice that gets them more more push rather than pat it on the back. The last thing I'm going to talk about uh, for this uh, eighth inning is in-game hitting instruction. A lot of times coaches during a game are trying to do a kid a favor by helping them mechanically or, or yelling things out during their bat and it's going to make it worse because a kid gets overwhelmed mentally. So what I see a lot is you know a coach giving a sign or something like that and then they'll say, hey Johnny, let's go, let's keep your head down, let's get your extension through the ball and let's rotate your backside. And the kid gets overwhelmed with going on what's going on in his head instead of saying, hit the ball up the middle or let's, let's focus on something else instead of giving them some encouraging words. You will not fix a kid's swing during a game. Let's fix them mentally more than just mechanically in the game. And I promise you, coaches that will give more mental adjustments during the game will help their hitters become way more successful than those coaches that are always trying to fix everything. I used to do it. I know it's hard. You want to say something. If it's a younger kid, they might understand it a little bit more. But for the, for the more advanced hitters, let's get more on the mental approach on in-game instruction instead of being so mechanical all the time. Say the mechanics for practice or before the game and make the in-game instruction more mental adjustments.